That's right, today we are getting into the King of the Ring 2024 because we just had Raw a couple of days ago and now we know what direction it's kind of going to head and there's one match that could be on the agenda that is going to blow all your minds. You know, it may not blow your mind, I don't know. It's definitely going to blow this bald guy's brain, mostly because I have no hair there. So it's easier to get on top. Also, please do forgive my weird surroundings because, of course, I am currently on tour with the Last Match Musical on the East Coast of America. And if you have come down or you are coming down, thank you very much. But yes, on Raw a couple of days ago, as we already said, the King of the Ring did kick off. And mostly the thing I want to talk about first off is we had Gunther versus Sheamus. And for the third time, Sheamus did get defeated. And Sheamus even tweeted out later on, you know what, we're not going to do a round four. But as a quick aside, we should do a round four. And do you know who should win? The answer is Sheamus. If you haven't seen this though, it went about 20 minutes and it was the main event and it was just so good. Mostly because both of these guys forget what pro wrestling is and they absolutely kick the ship out of each other. And once again, just go on social media and look at Sheamus' chest. It's ridiculous. It's like somebody took red crayon and painted it in. I mean, he's only been back a few weeks as well after going through all of those injuries. But Gunther does progress to the next round. And if anything, just to get right into it, if somebody's going to win, it should be Gunther although there are a couple of other guys in there, do make me raise an eyebrow. The other match we did have was Ricochet versus Ilya Dragunov. And I tell you, if this is what we are going to do with Ilya on the main roster, I mean, it's basically the same thing we did on NXT, where he just talks about how, oh my gosh, I love pain. I love being hurt so much. So there's nothing you can do to get to me. That's essentially what we did here. Like at one point, Ricochet just went dive, 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 dive somersault, dive, plant your corkscrew. And Dragunov basically just threw it away and punched him right in the head. Now, the very interesting thing is if we do go back to the draft from a few weeks ago, Ricochet did move quite high up on the ranking, so I hope we are going to do something with him. Once again, we go back to social media, which WWE does enjoy doing at the moment, and Ricochet was all like, oh man, I lost again, I can't believe it. I'm getting a bit tired of this, so I do think we have to watch it, but this really was just a match to tell people, in case you weren't familiar with Dragunov, that he is just the absolute best, and we should just keep doing this bit on television or on pay-per-views, premium live events, and he really should be the answer to what Will Ospreay is doing on Dynamite. I'm not trying to turn it into a WWE versus AEW thing, but to keep up with what the modern wrestling fan expects from their product in 2024. You have to have a guy that can just walk out there and just do bangers all of the time. And again, it could be Gunther, it can be Sheamus, but Ilya Dragunov feels brand new, he feels fresh, and people are going to be excited by that, which is probably why he did beat Ricochet, and he's in the next round too. We also had Jey Uso versus Finn Balor, which kicked off Raw, and I thought this was okay. Like, there was nothing wrong with it, but I don't think it hit the levels of some of the other matches. But I do like the fact that Jey Uso won here. Now, this was meant to be Drew McIntyre, but it was announced earlier in the day that he has suffered an elbow injury injury or his elbow injury is worse than we thought and he hasn't been cleared to wrestle and this is totally real. He did it during the Wrestlemania match I think when Punk attacked him which is karma to say the least which did tie into the promo they did later on in the show but it did open it's one of those things where something bad happens but it opens the door to a brand new opportunity because obviously Jay took on Damian Priest at Backlash and he wasn't able to win. Turns out I like that match way more than most people but hey ho that's how opinions work but here he got to face someone from Judgment Day and he got the victory and now this is when we get into the quarterfinals I think it's the quarterfinals finals, whatever it may be, we're doing Ilya Dragunov versus Jey Uso, which is one of those matches where I go, well, Ilya shouldn't win, and Jey Uso, it's like the other way around, Ilya, so tired, Ilya shouldn't lose, and Jey shouldn't lose, so what do we do here? Now, I hope WWE can hold their tongue, for lack of a better term, or hold their nerve, I should say, and don't book a silly distraction finish. It's a tournament, right? And when you watch real sports, the best thing about it is that someone is going to win, and somebody is going to lose. And as long as there is a story, there's a fallout to all of this, I don't think you need any distractions, I don't think you need any shenanigans. Now, I do think there will be some in this, who it will be, I do not know. It could even be the bloodline at this point. But I think that Elia scoring a proper win over someone like Jay Uso has been put up on a pedestal, just tells you this is a guy to watch. And Jay Uso is so over right now, I don't think it's going to affect him. No one's going to hold it against him or anything like that. It's not going to push him down the pecking order. Whatever you plan to do, you still can do. So we should use all the momentum that Jay Uso got from when he left the bloodline. And now we should put some of that on Elia Dragunov because that is when pro wrestling is at its best. In the same way that at Money in the Bank last year in the O2, Roman used his power to coronate Jay. Now we've got to do it the other way around. Now, before we get into the other first round matches, it also means that if Gunther beats the winner of Kofi Kingston versus Rey Mysterio, which for some reason is happening on a random house show match, which I don't even think WWE announced on Raw, which I thought was stupid, especially because Kofi cut such a good promo. Also, I don't think I've ever seen Kofi Kingston versus Rey Mysterio before. I assume that maybe Kofi will win because then it ties into the whole New Day thing. And what you can then do is Gunther versus Kofi Kingston. Gunther could take Kofi out as well, which again ties into the narrative. But if Dragunov does beat Jey Uso in the semi-final, you get Gunther versus Elia. Now look, it would be awesome if that could be the finals, but we don't have to worry about that because if you have seen some of the matches they had in NXT UK, 
just pull the trigger on that. I understand it will happen on Raw, because I'm pretty sure it's just the finals that are going down in the Saudi Arabia pay-per-view premium live event. But it doesn't matter, right? We're living in a brand new world where people expect banger matches all of the time, and it's hard to offer that. So if you do have this in the cards, just get it done, and you can re-establish that to the people that saw it down on NXT UK, which may not be, you know, that big of an audience, although I'm sure people would have found it on the internet. But then you can tell people this is a feud for the ages. You can do it once, you can do it twice, you can do it three times. I understand in the comments right now, people are probably going, no, Simon, we can't do that. We're giving it away too early. There's no such thing as too early as long as, once again, you know where you're headed with it. And as I always tell you, one day I'm going to be dead. And if I can get this match before I do die, then I'm not going to get mad about it. Just do it. Although I do think Gunther should win, which kind of makes me a hypocrite about what I just said. But I don't know. Ludwig Kaiser can get involved in that one. Just don't have shenanigans in the other matches. Which does indeed move over to the SmackDown bracket for the men's, and we'll get to the women's in just one second. And one of the first round matches we're doing is AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. That's pretty damn good. Now, I have to imagine that Randy probably went to someone and said, I'd like to fight AJ Styles because he makes everybody look good. And this is, again, one of those interesting situations where Randy Orton should probably win that because he hasn't lost since he has returned. But AJ Styles is sort of on a losing streak, but sort of not. But I just can't imagine they will put him through to the next round. So that makes that one really interesting. And I also think, if I've got the bracket right in my head, a final could be Gunther versus Randy Orton. And if Gunther won that one and cost Randy Orton his first loss again since he did make his return, then actually... Actually, AJ Styles losing here is totally okay. I'm going to repeat myself because once again, we're taking all this momentum and we're putting it back on Gunther. How he does become the king of the ring. Do you know what he should do next? Say, hey, Cody Rhodes or whoever he wants to, I'm coming after your world title. And the winner of AJ Styles versus Randy Orton is also going to take on the winner of Baron Corbin and Carmelo Hayes. Now, this one totally blew my brain. I hold my hands up. I'm a bit of a Baron Corbin fanboy because I think he's a chameleon when it comes to wrestling and he can just do whatever you ask him to. But this is the same thing for Ilya Dragunov. In no way should Carmelo Hayes be having another loss on SmackDown ever since he lost to Cody Rowe. But if we do call Baron Corbin up for him just to lose, that makes me worry that we don't have a story for him. Unless the reason Bron Breaker went into Adam Pearce's office is that somehow we are going to reunite Baron and Bron and do the Wolf Dogs on the main roster. And that's going to be very hard because Baron's on SmackDown and Bron Breaker is on Raw. But I just think it's very, very weird to call NXT's Baron Corbin up, who again did reinvent himself and prove once again, if you give him time, he can tell good stories. And he's a very, very good wrestler and all of a sudden have him lose, even if it is to somebody like Carmelo Hayes. Now, I do have a bit of history from NXT, but this one I'm fascinated by because on a personal level I don't want Baron to lose but on a more I suppose opinionated level Carmelo has to start getting some wins and if you wanted to put Carmelo Hayes all the way to the final and he took on Gunther I actually wouldn't mind that either but yeah I think Carmelo is going to win this watch this space we've also got LA Knight versus Santos Escobar and I think that LA Knight should absolutely win that because he has suffered way too many losses recently now he is going to have to get defeated at one point I suppose if he is going up against Legado and El Fantasma you could easily do a screw job there I don't know I think there's more worth in LA Knight getting a bit momentum and then they can screw him in the next match right so you've also got Bobby Lashley versus Tamatonga which is super interesting but if LA Knight beats Santos Escobar again we're going well who were well, Hayes doing all right and then I guess Bobby Lashley will win because Kevin Owens screws over Tamatonga and then you can do that match at the pay-per-view premium live event and that's totally okay but then yes you would also get LA Knight versus Bobby Lashley and here we go we're going to get into the deeper levels here and because Bobby Lashley and Carmelo Hayes fell out Bobby Lashley can then move forward because again Legado Del Fantasma is going to screw LA Knight and because we put Carmelo Hayes through it would mean it'd be Carmelo Hayes versus Randy Orton this doesn't actually work out I was going to say it could end up being Bobby Lashley versus Carmelo Hayes in the semi-finals before the finals but that would mean Carmelo Hayes has to defeat Randy Orton. I guess Randy is feuding with the bloodline. So damn it, maybe we could do it. And in fact, as we are predicting, that's what I'm going to say. Let's go through it again, just to be massive nerd. So Carmelo Hayes goes through. He beats Randy Orton. <laughs> which will be massive. And Bobby Lashley goes through and you get to that semi-final match, which means, yes, I've actually predicted that it's going to be Carmelo Hayes versus Gunther. And damn it, I stand by it. Because, of course, if we go back to what I have said, Gunther will beat Kofi Kingston, Elia will beat Jey Uso, and then Gunther will beat Dragunov, which means, yes, we do have Gunther versus Carmelo Hayes in the final. But why not? It's a brand new match. It's something we've never done before. Gunther will win. But I'm going to say when we get to that damn pay-per-view, it will be Carmelo Hayes in the final. If you want to hit me in the head, it's too late. I did it to myself. And moving on to the Queen of the Ring, we do have Shayna Baszler versus Zelina Vega, which is going down on a house show, which I also did find disappointing because I was looking forward to seeing them all on the episode of Raw. I would put Shayna Baszler for you because, of course, Zelina Vega won it last time. And I like Zelina Vega, but I'd like to give something to Shayna Baszler. And we had that awesome match between Io Sky and Natalia, which 
which you should go out of your way to see. Natalia once again proves she has absolutely everything it takes, no matter who you want her to face. And Io Sky, I don't think we've seen the best of her in WWE, which excites me great me. And then if we go through to that thing, we get Shayna Baszler versus Io Sky. Listen, I love Shayna, and I don't think she has ever gotten her due properly, but I think Io would probably win that one because she just lost the world championship, and a great way to light a fire under her ass is that she wins that match too. We also saw Dakota Kai versus Lyra Valkyria, which I just thought fell on a bad episode of Raw for them, because it didn't live up to the other matches we did see, and I actually think on many other episodes of Raw, it would have been a fine match, but the important thing there is that Lyra Valkyria did win. We've talked about the NXT thing. I don't want to talk about it again, and we do know that Zoe Stark beat Ivy Nile in a very short match. It was only like five minutes, which means we do have a quarterfinal setup, which is Lyra Valkyria versus Zoe Stark. And this one I find quite interesting too, because I've talked about NXT way too much. I just said that. I don't want to say it again. But I not only think that Zoe Stark should go through all the way to the final, I would actually have her win it, because I think there is a huge uptide to Zoe Stark. And as you probably found out, if you do like to frequent the internet, her win on Raw was the first one she's had in about six months. That is absolutely dumb. But we'll keep on going, because we also have Tiffany Stratton versus Blair. Blair Davenport, which is another one of those you're like, wait a minute, neither of these people should be losing because it's Blair Davenport's first match on the main roster. But Tiffany Stratt at the moment is ready to absolutely burst off into the atmosphere, so she shouldn't be suffering another defeat either. Like, I know she didn't get, like, submitted or pinned at Backlash, but it still counts as you didn't get a victory. So here she does have to do it, so that one's going to be interesting. And when it comes to Chelsea Green versus Indy Hartwell, it sounds like Robert Stone is about to be reunited with Chelsea Green. And do you know when a really good time to be that would be? right here. We're also getting Nia Jax versus Piper Niven, and as much like Piper Niven, WWE's so high on Nia Jax, I think they'll put her through. And we're getting Naomi versus Candice Theray. Now, given that Candice Theray is a bit of an asshole, she could win, but Naomi just lost at Backlash. I think WWE will give it to her. So we then go back and just go over what we did talk about, and I do think that Io Sky will defeat Shayna Baszler, so she'll go to the next round. I'm going to put Zoe Stark through, which means our semi-final would be Io Sky versus Zoe Stark. I'm just going to say it now, I'm putting Zoe Stark in the final. Moving back over to SmackDown, though, I'm putting Tiffany Stratton through, and I'm putting Chelsea Green through. And I think even if she does reunite with Roberts, though, Tiffany Stratton should still win, because, again, I'm going to put her all the way to the final as well. And given that would also give us Nia Jax versus Naomi, if we have Naomi win there, it means in the semi-finals, we're also going to have Tiffany Stratton versus Naomi that ties right into the narrative while I actually would like to see Naomi win that one at the moment like I've already said Tiffany is clearly on the production line to be sent right up to the top she will win and she gets into the final two which means now you have Tiffany Stratton versus Zoe Stark and now we have a problem <laughs> Because in no world is WWE going to put Zoe Stark over Tiffany Strat. Unless they do something super duper crazy, but I don't think they will do. So I'm changing my prediction. We get to the finals again. That will be the last two. Tiffany Stratton will win. She will be the queen of the ring. And actually, when we start talking about gimmicks, do you know how well she will wear that crown? She will be so obnoxious in the best possible way. That's what we should do. So there you go, my friends. I have picked Gunther and I have picked Tiffany Stratton to win. And hopefully that all did make sense because, well, one, even I thought it was gibberish. But two, I've literally just done one of my last match musical rock and roll wrestling experience production thingamajigs. So I think my adrenaline is a little bit too high and I probably should have calmed down first. But I did want to sit here and get a video done. I do apologize that we haven't done daily videos. I'm desperately trying to do it. But at the moment, we're literally traveling the East Coast of America and it's quite hard. <laughs> just going to totally admit it. It's hard to find the time. But you're probably going to disagree with me, so leave me a comment below, and you can predict it as well. Make sure you write out all the brackets. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Click the video on the screen, which will be me ranting and raving probably about something in WWE or AEW. You just never know. Otherwise, it's grillandmind.com for us Simon. Absolutely use the code Simon and go to their website right now because they're doing sales all the time. Usually get 10% off. At the moment, on specific products, it's 20% off, and this helps me as well. And it's just fitness stuff I use. They got another delivery the other day, and it's really helping me out here on the road. Otherwise, it's patreon.com for Simon316. Simon316 on Instagram and Twitter. Come give me a follow and tell me what you do and don't like about the videos. Always appreciate that. Simon J. Miller on TikTok. Simon Miller on Cameo. If you want a shout out, I've been doing loads of these out here. Kind of makes me feel connected to home, which is nice. Otherwise, it's Pro Wrestling Tees and Samson Athletics for merchandise. If you would like to buy a tee, saw someone wearing one of those tonight, which again made me so damn happy in my tum tum. It was that t shirt as well. They are my King of the Ring predictions. Remember, I'm always wrong because I'm an idiot. See you soon.